This is MikeBot. It's time for a new Hue Forge video. I haven't done a new Hue Forge video in a while. That's because there wasn't anything significant to highlight in the past. But now they're in version 0 0.7 and it's beta 1. Meaning that they're getting very close to the full release version. And I figured it's time to start highlighting some of the new functions and features that he's added to uh, the new software. And this is the time to do it now. So first thing I'm going to mention, it is still beta, so there are definitely some known issues. I spoke with a developer and he did highlight some of the issues that are known. And as I go through this video, I will talk about them slowly. So first things first, um, one of the biggest features of this one is the color pop. So when you go down to the luminance section right here, you're going to notice that it... Uh, has a color pop function and that's a new function which allows you to pop colors in certain images now in this image I've selected it's not going to work very well so I'm not going to be talking about the color pop for this image but I will go over it slowly so a few other really interesting things I've noticed right off the bat is he's done a lot of work on the filament library and there's a significant amount of filament to choose from now and he's even added some pre-made color packs here uh, looks like mostly with Polymaker, some with Bamboo, uh, a few other interesting ones. He still has the ability to add new filament yourself and then save it. Uh, you're still going to have to figure out the transmission distances yourself on that. Uh, I believe I, did, I touched on that briefly in one of my older videos, so you can check that out. Uh, he's also worked on the undo function, which is really nice now. Still not perfectly polished but the undo function does work now which is really nice they've also added quite a bit of brightness compensation settings so under the brightness compensation he's added quite a few new options now which is nice before there was four or five options at the most there's a power setting here they've added a little graph to show you what the brightness settings do basically so that's a nice little added touch He's got some unbiased lighting features now. He's got this little cool bar in the middle that tells you the layers of the colors. And he's even added a disable button for the colors here. So if you click this, you can disable the individual colors, which is really nice. He's also added a gap feature as well. So when you're doing the color pop, you have the ability to add gaps and it basically gives you just more function for coloring. There's also uh, a tolerance feature as well, which is under color pop, I believe. Yeah, so the, the extra gap and the tolerance are supposed to be used uh, sparingly. They're not supposed to be used uh, in excess of, because they're not fully polished yet. The rest remains the same, the depth, the general options, operations, uh, nothing really has caught my eye other than that so far. He has a filter bar now, so you can filter your colors to whatever you want. So that's nice added touch as well. And he's added a little color picker tool. Uh, where is it? Nope, he hasn't added the color picker tool. I thought he did. But I use my own color picker tool, and I'm going to highlight that in this video again in just a few minutes. So as I mentioned, this radiant bar here is new. Um, that's another thing I want to kind of highlight in this video. I'm excited to check it out. Uh, I did say the unbiased lighting is new. That's experimental as well. So don't mess around with the experimental stuff, in my opinion. And then the other cool thing, if you highlight or hover over an item, it tells you what it does. So for example, if you want to add sliders, you can do that. But you can only do it when there's no image loaded. So let's say you want to do more than, I don't know, 12 colors. I'm not going to count it. 12 or 16. You just hit plus, but make sure no image, image is loaded. And then you can delete it by clicking the minus button there. So I've launched my color picker app or color tool, whatever you want to call it. Be nice if he integrated this into uh, Hue Forge, but I don't think he has yet. So basically you go to the color, you select it, and it gives you the uh, little hex code here. And then you can insert it under a new filament. So basically grab this code, copy, paste it, and then there's your new color. 
So obviously this only works if you have that filament uh, in stock at your house. So that's all there is to just highlight and let's just dive right in and start. Once I finish this image, I'll print it, showcase it. And that's it for this video. There will be probably a part two coming in the near future. So I've selected here my MikeBot profile picture. And as you can see, there's black, there's white, there's gray, there's blue, there's a bit of neon, blue, teal, all colors that I have uh, in my 3D printing room. MikeBot here with some quick editor's notes. So I've trimmed out the rest of this segment because it was over an hour and a half long. After editing, I think I got it down to 20 minutes just for this one photo. So I ended up just trimming it out completely for the YouTube video and to make it a nice, small, quick, easy video for YouTube. If you want to see the full video, go on to my Patreon and check it out. I've also included some bloopers and a few little added um, nice little things to make the Patreon video more, uh, I guess, uh, enjoyable for everyone. Uh, I apologize. Uh, again, it was a really, really long segment. I wasn't expecting it to take so long. But it did, and it is what it is. But don't worry, I do have another photo coming up, and I haven't trimmed anything out of this next photo. Okay, I'm going to look for another photo, and we'll proceed from there. All right, I've selected a new image here. So let's see if this one looks a little better. So we're going to add some more filament to this one. So I'll add some red. And I'm just going to check if they have any Polymaker Brown. Yeah, they do, because I have some Polymaker Brown, so that's good. Just so I don't lose it, I want to find the exact one I have. Which is Poly Light Brown, and let's put it in here for now. I'm going to grab my Color Picker tool. Try to figure out what color that is. So that looks like it's a different shade of brown. This is what my color picker tool says, and I'm trying to think if I have any of that bronzy brown left. I don't, so we'll play around with the red a little bit to try to make that work. Speaking of red, I should add the red in here. And I'm just scanning the photo now, trying to figure out if there's anything else I could use. I'm thinking right here. The light brown, I do have a light brown or a beige color. So what I will do is I will search for beige. So I have the bamboo basic beige. And then I will look for light brown as well. I love this new search tool actually, it's kind of nice. And they don't have Polymaker light brown. So let me grab the picker tool again to get the exact code here. more about this color brown and quick add. so again I'm not playing with the transmission distances um, I don't have them memorized I don't have a list and I'm not gonna run hours of tests to try to figure out the transmission distance so I'm gonna go with a safe guess of five and then any other color here, maybe yellow. Yeah, maybe some yellow. I'm going to add some yellow in. Or does that qualify as beige? Yeah, I think I have all the colors I need. So this is a cool color picker tool. Make sure you grab one of these. So I think I have all the colors I need to make this print work now. And now we go back to the sliders and we mess around with the sliders. So uh, this time around, I'm going to just fast forward this entire scene. So I'm going to play with the sliders. T was just going to look like me at fast speed doing it kind of thing. And then once I get the right combination, I'll walk you through why I did what I did.
All right, so here's what I've come up with. So I have option one or option two. So I'm going to probably go with option one. I'm going to go ahead and give this a print and see what it comes out looking like. Now, before I print it, obviously, I'm going to show everyone how to color this in Bamboo Studio. So I'll start by saving the project. So now, um, just really quick, I just want to show everyone what the color pop feature looks like. So let's load a new image. Let's go with one of their defaults here. So the color pop will probably be a good example with this. And obviously the sliders are all out of whack. Let me just go back to standard for a second here. So let's disable that. Disable this, disable this, get rid of that filter, throw some yellow here, some blue, we have red, we need some green, and just play around with the sliders and now we'll just throw color pop in. So as you can see color pop basically just enhances the brightness significantly. So um, the color pop, I'm going to have to do another video on that. If you want to see a video, make sure you leave your uh, comments below and I'll do a video specifically on color pop. But for now, I've done another uh, Hue Forge demo. Uh, I'm going to go into Bamboo Slicer, set it all up, and then I'm going to print it and show everyone the finished product of Kratos. But basically, I've spoken about all the new features. Uh, Hue Forge remains the same uh, at its core with just some new added functions. And I am enjoying these functions more. So as he enhances all the uh, uh, the different releases, it becomes more interesting to use the software. Not easier, but more interesting. So let me go ahead and open Bamboo Studio now and show off Kratos. So when you uh, basically save the file it it gives you this describe file i'm not exactly sure where that new uh, where the describe function has gone but anyway the file gets spit out into the file where you save it and that's where uh, you're going to basically get your settings for your slicer so i'm just going to go ahead and save my library here again and then go back to bamboo studio and load up the kratos file so here is the file and now we'll pull the describe over. So the first color you want to start with is black. So before I even get to those colors, let me select my printer and resync all the colors here. So we got brown, check. I need red, silver, silk. So we'll need black for sure. Actually, that's the default. So let's change that to black. Change this one to silver, silk. We got brown, and then we need beige. This one's actually gonna be bamboo PLA. Basic, and it's beige. So silver, silk, brown, beige, and then white, black, beige, red, we're missing red. And that one is generic in my case. Okay, so black, brown, beige, red, silver, silk, white. And then I have a Hue Forge profile saved here. And basically what the Hue Forge profile is, I have it as three walls, 100% rectilinear, and the quality starts at 0.08. Nothing else too fancy about that. Check out my previous videos on how to configure that. So I'll start by slicing it. Once that's sliced, then we can start changing all our colors, and then I'm going to send it over to my printer and print it. Okay, so now I'm looking at my describe file on another screen, but basically it says at layer 8, which is right here. So take your slider in Bamboo Studio, slide it down to layer 8 or whatever layer your settings say. Right-click, change filament to brown. 
Then we're going to take the slider to the next one, which in my case is layer 9. And that changes to beige, which is number 5. And then from there, goes to layer 12, which then changes to red. And then to layer 13, that changes to silk silver, which I believe I made number 4. And then at layer 19, it goes to white. So black, brown, beige, red, silver, silver, silk, and white. Oof, I don't know how that's going to look, but hopefully it comes out uh, good on my bamboo X1C. If it does, great. If it doesn't, well, there will be a video too, so stay tuned. All right, so now I'm going to send this file over to my X1C. We'll just call it Kratos, and it's going to be four and a half freaking hours. Send. So while that's printing, I'll start editing my video for everyone, and then we'll go over the print. All right, so let's do that Kratos print. So over here we have black and A2, red and A3. And the rest of them are in the B. So what does that mean? A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, B4. Everything matches, ready to print. All right, can't wait to see the print in four hours. So as you saw in the pictures two seconds ago, it didn't come out perfect as uh, we saw in Hue Forge, but it's half decent. So that's my first attempt with uh, this new beta software and stuff. So we'll see how future stuff goes. So keep an eye out for future videos, but essentially it is what it is. It's not the best, but I'm still kind of happy with it. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. So that's it for this video. I went over some of the new settings. Uh, I demoed just a quick file on Hue Forge. I printed my test print and you saw the results uh, in the previous segment. That's it for this video. If you want to see part two, let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you have anything uh, in general, questions, comments, let me know and I'll answer them as soon as I get a chance to. That's it for the Hue Forge uh, version 0.7 beta 1. Thank you again. Mike Bot out.